Well, everybody, Cantonese Cat here. There are a few miners, Bitcoin miners, that have been requested on my comments. So I just want to spend a little bit of time kind of go through them real quick. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the fundamentals of them. I'm just going to show you here about the technicals, how I pull things up and what they mean and how I use them. That, that's all I'm going to do. Hopefully, after you watch this video, you can sign up for free at um, TradingView and you can just basically do the same thing that I do. You don't really need me to help you. But um, the, the key thing here, I, uh, first thing I want to show you is the um, volume shelf. This is basically the volume where the um, stock has been most heavily traded. So I, I don't want to take on all the history back in like 1996 because back then Bitcoin didn't even really exist, right? So I want more recent price history that is relevant. Um, so I'm going to just arbitrarily pick this point right here because there might be some pretty relevant price history that, you know, it's been trying to break out of but it's been failing. So if I click here, it's going to tell me all the volume for each of the price right here that has been traded hands from here on until the present. And as you can see, it's been the majority of the time, the majority of the volume that's been traded has been down here. And um, it's been trying to break about a couple of this volume shelf, for example, it's been trying to break about this volume shelf a couple of times, but it failed. Um, but the more it starts to try to break, the weaker this resistance will become, right? It's also trying to break above this volume shelf right here, once right here, and this used to be a support, you know, around here. So this, there's some you know, price history around this level right here. Um, what you're seeing here is really on the monthly is trying to form a base. It's just made a little bit of a higher low. It is forming a base, right? And this is really starting to become a potential trend change after more than about 20 months. You know how I know, because if I pull up the Bollinger Bands, which includes the 20 month moving average, it was going down, it was serving as resistance, but as it gets closer last month, if you actually look at the actual number for the moving average, last month, the number is shown right here by the corner in orange, by the way. Last one is 1.41, this one is 1.46. So it did go up and now it's starting to grow up and now you could be seeing a longer term bull trend here being developed, right? So that allows me to think, okay, if I invest, maybe I'm not gonna have time it perfect, maybe it can still drop pretty significantly, but this thing is trying to have a trend change and the trend once it happens in a longer term moving average, like the 20 month moving average, it can keep going up for a very long time and can keep dragging price up along with it, right? The same thing here, as you can see, as the slopes start going up, you're really starting to see the price being a lot more impulsive and start going up for, for a while, right? What we're seeing here might be the beginning of that. So it gives me more confidence to buy some of the stock here. And this is one of the miners, of uh, the smaller cap miners that I do own and I don't own a whole lot. I'm mostly based on technicals, not fundamentals. This is starting to look like a favorite, uh, favorable risk reward ratio here, looking at just the technicals alone, right? It's risky, it's small cap, they don't hold any Bitcoin. Um, they, they're trying to just sell their Bitcoin, they're trying to grow like crazy, um, but it's a little bit risky, right? But the trend is turning positive and I cannot deny that. This is the fact that I'm not making this up. The trend is turning positive. Now, you can look at the smaller time frame and try to find good entries, you know, try to find like a good support here and there. So I've got two um, indicators I usually use to look for that. One is the bull market support band. And it looks like right now, you know, price have been bouncing from the bull market support band. It's been kind of hovering around this range. So above the bull market support band, especially the bull market support bands pointing up, usually it tends to be favorable, right? Until it breaks down. You see how it broke down here, found a vulnerable spot that the, the average is starting, or they're moving, uh, the band is starting to flatten and found vulnerability and it broke down, right? Here it found some vulnerability and it broke back up. And here it served as a support and now we're bouncing from it. We'll see how far it goes. We'll see how good this support is. But because the longer trend is starting to turn bullish on the 20 month moving average, I'm starting to think that this is becoming a lot, a lot more favorable through time. Right. The other thing I look at, and you know, I've been posting this on um, X, but it hasn't, unfortunately, it just hasn't really been very favorable yet. Is that I was hoping that it would get back above the weekly Ichimoku cloud and stay above because you're able to stay above the cloud and actually has a chance to break through. That's when the real bullish, uh, bullishness starts, right? It did have a positive, or, or I should say, it did have a bullish um, 
10 kin kitchen cross, right? This is a bullish cross right here. Now, last time when this pro bullish cross happened, it ran up quite some for some time. And then when there was a bearish cross right around here, it probably just kept on going down, right? Now you're really starting to see a bullish cross up here. It's not above the cloud. So, you know, it's not my favorite setup on the weekly, but I'm not trying to trade the weekly. I'm really trying to ride the coattail of the entire um, cycle here. Now, if you look at the monthly Ichimoku cloud, it does look like it wants to have this bullish cross here with the tension, uh, with the Tengen and Kijin cross here, and possibly within the next you know few months or so. And there is a tendency when prices up here forming a base, the target could be all the way up here to the cloud. And that's a ways up there, right? Again, nothing is ever guaranteed, but it does look like the trend is changing. And it does look like if you look at the, you know, again, if you look at the monthly moving average, it does look like there is a trend change right here. So I find this trend to be favorable. I think it's going to most likely break through this volume shelf and just keep going up, right? So I beat the crap out of uh, Terror Wolf. I'm going to spend a couple of um, minutes on the other ones here. One is Cypher, right? And right off the bat, if you look at Cypher, Cypher is actually also favorable. You can actually see that the trend is indeed changing. It's starting to coil possibly upwards and prices above the um, the basis is on the higher part of the upper bull in Japan. So this trend is still favorable. You know, I think that um, even though it hasn't really done much over the last um, few months to half a year, this trend is still favorable and you're really starting to see the trend change right around here for the last three months or so. Once it starts to keep going, it could potentially start getting a little bit more impulsive. Price could push up the upper Bollinger Band, and the Bollinger Band could expand and get to where you know it would go on the bull market. So far, there is no confirmation, just like you know Terror Wolf, but it's really starting to see that there's a crawling up of a of a trend right here, and based on the fact that we expect potentially Bitcoin to go up a lot higher. And with the trend changing here, once the price gets going, it could potentially be pretty explosive, right? Now, the other thing about um, Cypher is if you do the volume shelf, most of the volume shelf is right up here. It's been majority of the time right here, as you can see. It's been not majority of the time, but it's been majority of the volume trading around here and here. So there's a lot of price history here. This is going to be serve as a pretty significant, you know, resistance level right here. And as you can see, it has, right? And then there's also a little bit of smaller volume shelf up here, which can also serve as a resistance. As you can see, it has, because there have been a couple of weeks that were trying to go up there, but got rejected. But guess what? It also serves as a pretty potentially pretty good support zone down here too. As you see, this volume shelf has been serving as a very, very good support for a few months. It's just been stuck in a range while it's trying to get the 21 moving average to start parting up. Some bullishness being developed here, which is promising. The other thing, if you just uh, kind of zoom in a little bit closer, I'm not going to look at the bullish band here. What I want to do is to look at the Ichimu cloud. This one right here is actually inside the cloud. It broke about the cloud a few times, trying to came back down to test the cloud as support. It's in the process of still testing it as support. And right now you had an overlap of the uh, Tenkin and Kijin, which could potentially signal a little bit of bullishness here. Although it could also serve as a little bit of a, of a resistance here as well. Um, so right now price is kind of ranging sideways, but there are some you know bullishness that's being developed on both the monthly as well as on the weekly. And instead of looking at the um, Ichimoku cloud, you can also look at the relations in terms of what it is with the bull market support band. As you can see, it's just been ranging, hugging a flat bull market support band for quite a few months now, like for almost, like more than half a year. Right now, it's on top of it. Looks like it's trying to find support. There's a potential for it to start bouncing because again, the 20 month moving average is also starting to curl up, right? So there's a potential that it could start bouncing soon. It could go to higher prices. Another thing to, to kind of look at it, but there's no guarantee because it's flat. I mean, it's not going to serve as very good support or resistance. Another thing to look at, though, is that there has been a kind of like a meme um, bear market trend line. If you draw a line right here and if you go through here, it looks like there's a little bit of, you know, a couple of um, false breakout here on this line. It touched one through three and right here it got people really super excited. But next thing you know, bang, it has a pretty bearish candle right here. I think you call this a shooting star. 
um, you, you it's just bam going. We checked it all the way back down, right? And it's been three additional weeks going back down, right? And now it's starting to peak out a little bit again, giving like a little bit of like a false breakout, and then bam, right back down again. The more this trend line gets tested, the weaker it's going to be. I, I think there's a good chance that it will break out at some point, and um, it's something to kind of watch out for. Again, I'm not talking about fundamentals. I'm just purely going going uh, by the technicals here. But the technical is starting to look a little bit more favorable as time goes on. Right? That's Cypher. Um, another one that uh, a lot of people have asked me about is a minor BTBT uh, bit digital. Now these guys have been around since the last cycle. Um, if you look at the pattern here, it's really starting to look like a very nice accumulation pattern over here and over here. Right? It's almost like it's a big giant cup here. It's like a you know big handle and maybe forming a little bit of a smaller handle here. Um, but it's starting to look like a little bit of like a accumulation pattern here. Um, if you look at the volume, um, in just in general, where's my volume? It just completely disappeared. If you look at the volume, you just search volume and it comes up, right? If you look at the volume, you can see there's a lot of buying volume up. And when it sells, the volume goes down. And when you buy, the volume goes up. This is a very, very classic accumulation pattern. It's being accumulated. I'm just going to leave it as that. The other thing is, instead of making it look too busy, I want to show you the volume shelf. Right? And again, you click over here, volume shelf, anchor volume profile. I'm not going to go through too much of price history. I do want to, have to take in some data from the last cycle. I'm just going to do. <clears throat> I'm just going to do this, right? And you can see that the volume shelf <clears throat> tells you the, um, the volume history all the way from here all the way up to this point, where it's traded the most hands at in terms of price. There's a lot of um, potential resistance up here, but down here is really trying to combat this <clears throat> this range right here. And it's been trying to surpass this um, resistance here for, for, for a while. You can see there is also a lot of um, horizontal price history at, at this level. And there's also, you know, a little bit higher is also a lot of um, price history right above for that too. But once it breaks above this uh, shelf right here, the resistance seems to be a lot less and it could go all the way up to potentially like $9. Um, just because the volume trade up here is not going to be, be as much to serve as like resistance. There's just not enough price history here at this particular level, right? So you can go up a lot higher and touch this level right here and then potentially touch another level up here. Um, but before it does that, it needs to break through this area over here. And it's been trying. The more it tries to do that, the more likely it's going to break through, right? Um, the other thing to show you is I want to go back to the monthly. And if you look at the monthly bull in Japan's, you can also see that the 20 month moving average is also crawling up here. So again, this could be again, the beginning of a pretty powerful bull trend potentially, right? It's pointing up. Something to think about. Um, another thing is if we go back to the weekly, we, if you want to look and see how the um, price is in relations to the uh, Ishimoku cloud, it's inside of it, it broke down a little bit and then it went back up, got rejected on the top of the cloud and went back down. It might hover around here for a little bit longer before it goes up, but it, you know, as you can see, it broke up here, went back, tested the cloud, bounced from the cloud, went back up, got rejected as well on the shelf, went back down and tested the cloud again. So far, it's finding support. It's going to work its thing. And it's also got a little bit of a, you know, bullish cross here going on here between the uh, Tenkan and Kinjin. So I think there's a good chance for it to continue to break out here maybe over the next few months, right? But it's a laggard. It is a laggard. Um, but, uh, the, you know, you have clear price targets up here if you're able to learn how to do the volume shelves, right? In relationship to the bull market support band, if you just pull it up here, it's flat. It's been hugging it. It's been doing nothing around here, right? So the thing that I really can depend on more is really the higher time frame with the bull Japan and the um, 20 month moving average. You might be wondering where the lower bull Japan is. I didn't take it out. I think it's just way too um, volatile here. It's just kind of disappeared. But the key thing is that the 20 month moving average is crawling up here. And that gives me a lot more confidence on BTBT from a technical standpoint. Another one that is uh, you know a little bit more popular, Hive. <clears throat> HIVE. 
It's also um, developing a longer term bull, tr uh, bull trend. It's starting to really slowly crawling up here a little bit. You can see the price last month was 3.48 at the, at the moving average, and price right now is 3.54, right? So it's starting to crawl up a little bit here. And bullish trend is also squeezing, which allowing room for it to, to, to expand, right? Once it picks its direction, looks like the direction right now is based on a basis. It wants to go up. So it could continue to just keep going up. And guess what happened last time when Hive did the same thing, right? Kind of base over here. And when it starts to curl up, that's when it potentially a pretty impulsive bull market starts, right? So that's Hive, right? Um, in addition to looking at that, um, let me see whether or not there's any. Yeah, so the, the price history has actually been long enough for it to have an Ishimoku cloud on the monthly. So most likely it might base up here as the bull market goes up, it could potentially hit up to the bottom of the cloud or even to the top of the cloud. And that could serve as some potential resistance here. If you look at the um, the price history, it does look like that <clears throat> there's a huge volume shelf here. So it's going to be a lot of resistance and trying to break away from the zone. And there's also potentially, you know, once it breaks out, it can potentially hit around here, where it's also volume shell resistance right here. And there's also a little bit more resistance over here through the cloud. We'll see whether or not it breaks through the cloud this cycle. You know, last time it kind of broke about the cloud a little bit, hovering around a little bit, didn't really quite get anywhere, and it just kind of went back down below the cloud. We'll, we'll see how it goes this cycle, right? If you look at a weekly, again, went inside the cloud, went to the bottom of the cloud to test it as support. Not the strongest look, I would say. I was hoping to be a little bit more impulsive and then went back down to test it, but it's still inside the cloud right now. It's still somewhat favorable, right? And if you zoom in here, you can also see that it did have a bullish um, Tenkin Kijin cross right here on the weekly, which, you know, basically tells you that the trend may be turning positive on the weekly as well. If you look at the uh, relations on the bull market support band, Again, it's also just been going sideways and it's been hugging it. A lot of the smaller cap um, Bitcoin miners are basically doing very similar things. One other, a uh, couple other ones here. One that I get asked a lot is, um, I don't know how you say this, Iris Energy Limited, Iran, like the country maybe? Anyway, it, it, um, if you look at, um, I'm going to take this out here. I just want to look at the monthly first, right? You look at a higher time frame. It's also called uh, forming like a, a bottoming behavior over here. It's actually started to form a higher high, a higher low, and it's forming another higher high here. And it looks like it just formed a higher low here. So the chart, you know, without this month being bullish like this, I actually was initially not sure about this one, right? Because if you look at a bull in Japan, without this month being bullish like that initially it was downtrending but as the month went by it actually pulled the 20 month moving average up so this month has really been kind of like a game changer here it's been pulling a uh, trending month moving average up and the bullish band is also expanding so just from this one month's price, price action it really start to make the greater trend a lot more bullish as you can see and it's still above the uh, higher part of the um, bull, bullish band right here Curling up, it really tells me that the trend that it wants to pick next as the bullish of expense is probably going to go up. Now, in addition to the monthly, let's look at the weekly. You know, a couple of things. So, your weekly one is the cloud, the Ichimoku cloud went back above just from this month alone. And also started developing a bullish um, Tijin Cousin cross over here on the weekly, telling you that it might be a bull trend here starting here on the weekly too. Another thing to look at is what's the price in relation to the bull market support band starting to curl up a little bit and price is above it and went back down and tried to test it it seemed to bounce right back up and now it's back above the band you can see that when it's above the band when the band is positive slope good things happen right and as you can see if price are below and the, and the band is sloped down bad things happen right until it doesn't obviously um, but i think we might just be at the beginning because the monthly trend tells me that we could be at the beginning of a bull trend over here too. Just something to think about. I want to show you one last one that um, a lot of people have asked me about as well, which is DigiHost. Now, DigiHost, just like all the other ones that I showed you so far, also has the beginning of a bull trend here. All of these are laggards. All of those are really just starting to develop a little bit of sign of a bull trend right here. Um, that's why I 
you know, chose not to kind of talk about them as much. But if you are willing to to not need the confirmation, if you want to get into something that's a little bit smaller, uh, smaller market gap, if you want to have the high risk, high risk, high risk, high reward kind of thing, then you might be looking at these. But again, they may not pan out because there's no confirmation really. They're starting to look a little bit more bullish though, you know, right? Monthly starting to point up. Weekly, if you look at the Ichimoku cloud, it's above it. it went back above, went that down, tested it. Bullish um, Tijin Kijin cross. All of them look pretty similar. So that's why I haven't really been talking about each of each, each and individual one of these. Um, but if you also look at the um, Pumaki support band, it also looked like it finally bounced back above, tested it, and it's starting to kind of develop a little bit of a base right here. It is starting to look pretty decent, just like all the other ones I've talked uh, just talked about today. All right, it's over the 20 minute mark. I just wanted to address um, and let you guys um, get the answer that you want in terms of all the other miners. I'm moving forward, I probably won't be focusing on them as much unless I see something interesting. It's been over 20 minutes. Thank you for listening. Bye.